Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Debbie. I'm so happy to get to speak with you again, Jennifer. We last talked TCM Film Festival 2016. We did a wonderful, like, 15-minute interview. To get to speak with you again and about this miniseries is just so wonderful. And, Jeff, you have just... We've spoken before... Um, about Philomena, and oh, wow. it's that's from working on this. Was, honestly, ten years ago. That's I know, yeah. And I I didn't get to talk to you about Stan and Ollie. I talked to John, but I didn't get to speak with you about it. But I think you were the perfect person to write this script for this miniseries. You have an innate talent for being able to get to the underpinnings below the facade of people, below that, that public persona, and really tap into. You did this so well with Stan and Ollie, and now you have done it to the nth degree here with Archie. Just so well done. I am just so tickled that Diane and Jennifer are at a point where, yes, they gave a go-ahead to do this miniseries. I, so I got to ask you, Jennifer, did you have, you and your mom have any kind of trepidation or what was the impetus that said, okay, we'll get on board with this. It's now time. Quite frankly, so much trepidation. Um, yes, when, when Jeff first approached, I thought, no, absolutely not. It's never going to happen. Uh, Dad was such a private man, and why at this phase would I, you know, go into his life story? But the more Jeff and I spoke, and the more I realized how thoughtful and intelligent, you know, clearly his work was bright and brilliant, but the more I sat with him and realized how collaborative he was and um, how intense Jeff was on getting it right, really getting to the heart of the matter, and that being Dad's childhood, which is a fascinating story. Mm -hmm. In the final analysis, I thought that deserved to be told, and quite frankly, it's healing. I, I personally find it very healing to go through my father's history and realize, you know, the, the journey that he made from a young boy in Bristol with nothing um, to Cary Grant. So I, I consider it healing for the generation, you know, for my ancestors as well. I'm curious, Jennifer, was there, did you do any additional research or learn anything new? Because yes, there was a basis of your mom's book, Dear Cary, and then everything spun from there, with all of the, the detail, Jeff, that you have going back to Archie's childhood is just impeccable. And I thought I had read almost everything on Cary Grant. There were little kernels in here, little gems that either I had forgotten or I didn't know. So I'm curious, Jennifer, you know, is there anything in the research in this process that was new to you? There was quite a lot that was new to me because Dad spoke so little of his childhood. You know, he would he would tell me little morsels here and there about. Well, I knew Grandma Elsie. Um, I did not meet Elias, my grandfather, who passed before I was born. But I knew, for instance, that my grandmother had been institutionalized. But I did not realize that it was my grandfather who had sort of signed her life away. Um, I did not know that my father thought she was dead mm -hmm. for, for all of his boyhood and much of his adult life. Um, so yes, there were definitely things that were new to me 
Um, I think I, I did realize because of knowing my father, not so much because of what he spoke, but I could feel the pain of his childhood in him. Um, mostly uh, because he was so quiet about it. Mm-hmm. I think there was a deep pain and shame in him about those years. I think as children we, we feel everything is our fault. And I think he carried that with him um, until late in life. Yeah, and possibly even to the grave. Well, now this begs the question for you, Jeff. How, what kind of and how much research did you do into Archibald Leach to get to these things that even Jennifer didn't know? It was an enormous amount of work that, that went into that, lots and lots of conversations. And, and remember, some of what happened here is that, that drama enables us to, to feel moments as opposed to reading them in a book or, or having them told to you in a documentary. To see the pain on someone's face when something happens allowed, and also to, to assemble the, the whole story uh, as a beginning, a middle and an end, enabled uh, uh, Jennifer and, uh, and her family to, I, I guess, uh, understand, feel, experience something of the story even if um, even if she might have known the component parts there's something about seeing it all put together but but to answer your question there was the the the, the, the most extraordinary revelation in the uh, in the piece is um, what happened to him as a little boy when he was told that his mother had part was dead um, and there is reference to something like this in in autobiographies but but and ultimately, the the core source of that was Diane, who um, she she mentioned it in her book, but had not really uh, set it out in the way that this series does. Mm -hmm. uh, what, why and how he was told that she was that she was dead, and and what he was doing, and what point he was in his life when he discovered, in fact, it had been a terrible betrayal, and that that she was still alive. So. Um, Really, it was it was years. It was years of spending time with with Jennifer and with uh, with Diane. There, there are lots. Of, there's lots written about um, about Cary Grant. Although he was famously a very, as Jennifer said, a very private man. He he didn't do, for instance, chat shows. He didn't do magazine articles talking about his life. He he, he you know he put himself out there for his work, but but then he then he was a private individual. He he didn't want to um, talk about himself and his life mm -hmm. for last question i have to ask both of you then you know what did you each take away from this project in terms of because jennifer you are a writer you have not just good stuff but other books you have out jeff you are fabulous as a screenwriter so i'm curious how this experience of making archie and putting, bringing it now to the masses, what did you each take away from this that you will take forward in your life or in your work? I can say for me that it, it, it has been a very healing experience. You know, I touched on that earlier. But for instance, um, when we had Final Cut, I played it for my son, Carrie, who just turned 15. And I felt so vulnerable. In, in showing him this, you know, in showing him his grandfather's history, uh, but also really wonderful that he knows these, these threads of his life, his genetic material, so that he can understand his story. Because I think secrets, um, even if they're not meant to be secrets, just unknown territory about one's life can be tricky. It can be very, very tricky. Mm -hmm. So I, I find it very healing. Uh, for, for me, uh, I think what, what I thought was, was fascinating was how contemporary really this story is, because um, what, what Carrie did was uh, arrive as this broken teenage boy in, in New York in, in around the time of the First World War and, and created 
over the next couple of decades this amazing persona of, of Cary Grant and, uh, and hid behind that to shield himself from the pain of what had happened as a boy. But actually that's quite a contemporary thought because what we do is we all present a slightly different face to the world through principally through the growth of social media. But we all present a slightly different idealized version of ourselves to the world. And that's really what he was doing all those years ago. So, you know, life, life moves on, but life's the same. Mm -hmm. The job's so well done, and dare I say it, Archie really is good stuff. And oh, thank you. Well said, thank you. Uh, you know, and that line that's in the, that's in the miniseries once we get to hear that, and I just chuckled because you and I had spoken so much about that at TCM, Jen. So, guys, thank you so so thank much. You.